Podcast Origins, where I play the game, do the research, and give you my opinion after the fact. Today I give you the origins of the world, or country, or realm, I don't know, of Nazgoth, from the Legacy of Cain series. Nazgoth. 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 Yeah, that's the one. The story begins with the ancient vampires before they were just regular vampires. Confused yet? I'm just going to call them angels because that's obviously what the writers are projecting here. Either that or winged smurfs. Anyway, the angels were a powerful and wise race that protected the realm of Nazgul as they worshipped their unnamed god and preached their belief of the Wheel of Fate, which is the cycle of death and rebirth. On the other hand, the Hilden were a demonic race. I sense a theme. Anyway, the Hilden decided they didn't like the whole death part of the cycle and waged a 1,000-year war against the angels in order to protect Nazgul. The angels constructed nine pillars that controlled a corresponding element. The Pillar of Mind, Dimension, Conflict, Nature, States, Balance, Energy, Time, Death, Earth, Fire, Wind, Water, Heart, Go Planet! Generosity, Honesty, Kindness, Laughter, Loyalty, Magic, Donna! Fire again, Ice, Candy, Slime, Purity, Love, Fire for a third time, both Lightning and Wood, Fucking Bubbles! Light, Dark, Metal, Gravity, Magnets, How do they Electricity, concrete, neon, video, smoke. What the fuck? Uh huh. Well, that joke rants, of course. Each pillar was assigned a guardian, and as time passed, the guardians died or were killed, and new angel guardians were born to take the place of the fallen. The war was finally put to an end when the angels banished the Hylians, whoops, the Hildens, to a hell dimension, but not before they placed a curse on the angels that turned them into proper vampires, i.e. blood drinking, immortality, and supernatural impotency. Hold up. The Hilden wanted to escape the Wheel of Fate, a.k.a. become immortal, and they used it as a final attack curse on the angels before they banished them to hell? Don't get me wrong. Turning the angels into vampires and displacing them from not only their core belief, but their very god was the ultimate fuck you. What I'm getting at is, why not use that on themselves? Seems like you can kill two birds with one curse, so to speak. Escape the Wheel of Fate, and at the same time decimate the opponent with your crazy new blood powers. But I digress. The gravity of the situation starts to set in, and some don't take it well. Mass suicides. The few who refrained from the self-induced genocide were concerned about the welfare of the pillars. You see, vampires can no longer be born, so when a guardian died, a new one was born from the human race. Yeah, there are humans in Nosgoth as well. So time passes and some figure out that humans not only make a great meal, but they can also have the blood curse passed to them. Unfortunately, humans didn't very much care to be bled and cursed, but they did like one thing. Power. Since vampires were no longer born, and the Pillar's guardianship fell into human hands by virtue of popping out of a vagina, a scheme was formed by Mobius, the Time Streamer, and the Old God, the alleged hub of the Wheel of Fate. The reason I say alleged is because the worse the world gets, the bigger it becomes. My theory is he is an immense vacuum bag of souls, holding but never releasing or allowing rebirth. Thus, the more the world falls to shit and people die, the bigger the fat ass gets. Although I could be wrong. Maybe he has OCD and wants every soul before he reboots all life, because anything from the previous world would only be a contaminant fucking up his very balance of the life cycle he's trying to start. Kinda sounds like a morbid version of the cycle in Dark Souls. But I digress. Again. Where was I? Oh yeah, the plot. A plan was formed to kill all the remaining vampires, because let's face it, they aren't just gonna die, and that would leave the Elder God with a massive OCD headache. This overly complicated plan was the actual plot of the first game, Blood Omen. Yes, I'm just getting to the very first game. Cain, who was a nobleman, and unbeknownst to him, is the guardian of the Pillar of Order, would be killed, turned into a vampire, and kill every other guardian, then himself, in order to bring prosperity to the world and balance back to the Pillars. Things don't go as planned. Cain says fuck that and decides to rule the world with vampires. It doesn't work out. Don't get me wrong, he has a 1,000 year reign that looked promising, till he hurls his top lieutenant Razier into the Lake of the Dead where he dissolves like an Alka-Seltzer. We fast forward an unknown amount of time where he is awoken by the unnamed Elder God. He is then dubbed the Soul Reaver which is a glorified vacuum to the vacuum bag that is the Elder God. Raziel is now tasked with killing his way to the top of his ex-brethren, the vampires, in a shithole world ruled by Cain, in order to get his vengeance. The end of the game involves time travel, which leads to the sequel, which has a lot of plot twists, which leads to the sequel of that game, ends with an ambiguous conclusion that doesn't answer much and leaves a lot of time paradox plot holes. 
I'm not going to get into that. So, if you want to know more, then play the games. I made this video to tell the origins of Noskoth, and cast light on the nonsensical string of logic that led up to the games themselves. What did we learn? If you want immortality, and have the means to obtain it, use it on yourself. If you hold the title God, find a better agent. Don't leave important things like, pff, I don't know, the fate of your entire plan on an unlikable wraith that holds no allegiance to you in the first place. Last, time travel is a fickle mistress of a plot device. Use it at your own risk.